Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. We'd like to welcome Dr. Alan Bauman today. He's a renowned hair transplant surgeon and founder and medical director of Bauman Medical in Boca Raton. Welcome today. It's so nice to get to talk with you. Oh, it's great to be here, especially always at A4M. Yeah, you've been here the past several years, correct? So I've actually been a member of A4M since 1998. Wow. Which was uh, back in one of the first years that I had started my own practice. And I've attended so many conferences with you guys, um, you know, well over a dozen, probably 15 or even 20. That's amazing. So what made you decide to become a hair transplant surgeon? My journey kind of began uh, in plastic surgery, actually. I was mentored at a young age by a very close friend of the family who was a plastic surgeon in Manhattan. And I had the opportunity, before you could go see videos of surgery on YouTube, before you could like turn on Discovery Channel or get mm -hmm. something on demand or check something out live on Facebook, I had the opportunity to actually watch plastic surgery procedures live up close and impersonal you wow. know, just looking over a surgeon's shoulder mm -hmm. in the OR. Wow, that's and uh, very that, cool. that changed my life forever. Uh, I was about 15 years old and I knew right away I wanted to do something in medicine that was also artistic and life-changing for patients. But that still doesn't uh, explain how I ended up in hair, so that, that's a little <laughs> bit more of the story. Uh, later on in my surgical residency, I had a chance to meet a hair transplant patient. Mm -hmm. And one of the amazing things was that at that time, I was completely unable to tell that he had had a hair transplant. And so I was just fascinated by the fact that he had had one done and we talked about it. And um, he told me a little bit about the technology. It, remember, this is back in the 1990s when there was not a lot of good uh, results coming out of the, the field of hair transplant surgery. Most things were pluggy and unfortunately painful. Mm -hmm. And his experience was totally different. His experience was with single follicle implants and it looked natural and normal. And so I was, totally turned on surgically by that. And, um, and then he started to tell me about how it changed his life. Mm -hmm. So socially and professionally, um, his career changed, his, uh, his relationship status changed, and I remember him telling me all about that. So I figured, well, maybe I should take a peek at this. So that was uh, almost 30 years ago. Wow, well that would be a life-changing experience for someone who might uh, be losing their hair or well, self-conscious. Self-conscious, um, yes. You know, hair, hair. hair is an important determinator of mm -hmm. the way that we feel about ourselves. And so, you know, I mean, everybody can relate to a bad hair day, yes. you know, um, but when you have hair loss, it can turn into a bad hair week, a bad hair month, a bad hair life. And that's not so good No. when you're losing your hair. And for men and for women, and probably somewhere between 80 and 100 million Americans out there are struggling with hair loss. So it's a big problem. Do you see that the majority of your patients are men? So in the beginning, when I first started the practice uh, nearly 25 years ago, I thought it was going to be like 90% men and you know very few women. And boy, was I wrong. So after a couple of years, I started to realize, oh my gosh, this is a big problem for women also. 50% of my patients are women. Wow. Um, today, we obviously have different types of therapies and, and treatments. Uh, that are less invasive and more preventative to try to enhance the function of the follicles. So many of these types of therapies are just better for women in general than something more invasive or surgical. Mm -hmm. But uh, we do a lot of transplants on women as well. Not just hair, but also eyebrows and eyelashes. Okay, that's uh, Anywhere true. they're losing Good their point. hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And have you always had your practice in Florida? Yes, so after I completed my fellowship in New York, I moved with uh, my wife, we were engaged at the time, we moved down to Boca Raton, mm -hmm. and I went looking for real estate and organizing the practice. Um, that was back in 1997. So wow. we're entering our 25th year in Boca. We've expanded a lot over the years. Uh, we started out with one operatory, uh, no employees. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was, it was a, a, a rough start, but we got through that and um, we've expanded every year since. So today we have, I have a, a 12,000 square foot facility. We call it the Hair Hospital. It's got five operatories, it's staffed with over 30 people. Uh, and we see about 1,500 patients through the door each year who are struggling with hair loss. So would you say that hair loss is primarily genetic or are there other lifestyle factors that can affect um, it as well? 
So genetics certainly is a huge underlying factor. When we think of um, people with hair loss, usually it's male pattern baldness or female pattern hair loss, and there's definitely a huge genetic component. Um, but there are many other things that can affect the function of the hair follicle. Mm -hmm. So that's how we get into lifestyle issues like sleep-wake cycle, nutritional status, stress, self-care, all of these inflammatory diseases and conditions. So there are literally hundreds and hundreds of different types of hair loss that could occur, but a lot of it starts with that genetic pattern, mm -hmm. and then it's overlaid with other medical conditions or risk factors. Even how we style our hair can mm -hmm. impact the follicle over time. So we try to elucidate all that during the consultation process. So it's not just, oh, you've got this hair loss problem, bop, 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 here's the solution. No, we gotta dig into it holistically. And I think that's one of the things that kind of separates Bauman Medical from many other practices out there, especially even just you know, non-core you know, dermatologists or even other hair transplant clinics. We kind of take a little bit more of a holistic approach. Oh, that's great. And that's really one of the reasons yeah. why we're here and have been here for A4M. It's been very symbiotic for me. I've learned so much about those influences on people's health. And of course, hair is just a very strong barometer of our health. So there can be a lot of underlying conditions that can affect our hair, for sure. Wow, that's really insightful. Because sometimes you see, you know, a, a father who has his hair at 65 and then the son is bald already. So it's just, I guess, it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's an old wives' tale that it was the mother's father, you know. Um, okay. There's so many uh, genetic components now. We know that there are hundreds of different SNPs, single nucleotide pleomorphisms, right, polymorphisms, um, that could determine your hair color, quality, texture, when you're going to start to thin out in terms of your hair loss. What's the pattern going to be? Mm -hmm. So it can skip generations. It can skip siblings. It could happen, you know, worse in one generation than another. So you there's just a lot never of never know. Okay. <laughs> but one of the newest things that we have now actually is genetic testing for hair loss. So we can do a genetic test to see if you're going to be at risk for hair loss. Mm -hmm. And we can also do genetic testing to see what treatments you're most likely to respond to. Do you have a lot of people coming in for that test? Oh yeah, it's been a huge uh, successful and uh, important part of the practice this year actually. Uh, it's very new, so we're still learning as we go obviously mm -hmm. about what these different um, genetic profiles mean. But I'll give you a great example. A lot of people have tried Rogaine over the counter. Mm -hmm. It's been FDA approved for like 40 years. It's easy to get, you go to your supermarket. Um, but a lot of people don't have good success with it. And we didn't really know why. You know, was it compliance, adherence to the program? Was it greasy or gooey? Did it cause irritation? Well, now we know there's a special enzyme in our skin that converts the minoxidil to minoxidil sulfate, minoxidil being the active ingredient in the Rogaine. And minoxidil sulfate, the active metabolite, is what stimulates the hair. We can now detect the enzyme activity or predict the enzyme activity through genetic testing. So we, should, we can do a cheek swab, send it off to the lab, and find out, are you going to be that type of person who doesn't have a very high activity, this enzyme activity, so you're more likely to not get a good response from minoxidil. We have to either find something alternative for you or to boost up that minoxidil to really make it work. Wow. So pretty, you know, really, really exciting new technology. Yeah, that, that is really cool. I've never heard of that until today. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, it's called the Trico okay. Test Okay. Uh, by GX Sciences. And a lot of um, compounding pharmacies are using it these days, uh, Anaseo Health, for example. But you can get it from physicians, um, you know, and even on our website at baumannmedical.com if people want to try it at home. They think they've tried one type of treatment and it hasn't worked for them. They can take this genetic test and we can dial down into exactly what kind of therapies they're most likely to have success with. So it can save time, it can save money, it can improve the results much quicker. So it's really great for patients. It's That's really, really amazing. Good. Really amazing. And I'm sure our viewers and listeners really appreciate those tips. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure speaking with you.